So maybe you find yourself struggling with depression. Maybe you find yourself discouraged. Maybe you find yourself feeling low. Maybe you find yourself living in fear, living in doubt. I want to encourage you along these lines of what we've been talking about, that there is incredible hope. And that's why I've titled this message today, You Can Overcome. Because I want you to know that you can overcome all of those things I just mentioned. I've personally been through some extremely low times in my life. Very difficult on myself, very difficult on my family, very difficult on those around us. And God's healed me, right, of that. And I believe that he can do that for all of us. But the important thing that I want us to understand is that there's hope in him. And the current situation we find ourselves in is one thing, right, that can tend to lead to those things, discouragement, depression, feeling isolated, feeling alone. And but there, there can be a lot of things, right? There can be, you know, that's why I put into the category of, of life. It's not necessarily something we've done. And it's not really something that someone else has done to us. You know, it's just, it, it's life. And we're all, right, we're, we're globally, in fact, you know, rarely can we say globally, right? Uh, uh, but globally, we're all in, in a very similar situation. But maybe you feel depressed or discouraged or down because of maybe something somebody's done to you, right? Or perhaps it's something that you've done. That can be hard to, to wrestle with. You know, I should have known better. Or, you know, I made this decision and it's impacting me years ago. You know what? I want you to know that regardless of why you find yourself feeling the way that you do, that you're not alone, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 tells us that, right? That, that no temptation has seized us. As n- nothing has come our way except that which is common to mankind. So regardless of the reason, you're not alone, right? If, if you've done something, do what, what Rehoboam should have done and confess it to the Lord. If you need to confess to someone else, right, then, then do that as well. But, but get real, get on your face personally before the Lord. And I'm not talking about putting your face on the ground. I mean, if you feel that, that's fine. But like, you know, you know what I mean? Get on your face. It's like, just humble yourself before the Lord and seek that, that close walk with him. If it's, if it's something that someone else has done to you, this can be on the surface, perhaps a little more complicated because the response isn't entirely up to me or to you, right? There, there's someone else involved. And so I, I can go to them, right? I can try to make it right, but I can't control their response. Maybe they won't let it go. Maybe, maybe the person is deceased and you, you really can't have a conversation with them. Uh, maybe their heart is hard and, and, and it's just over. We can all do what the Apostle Paul said is forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on towards those things which are ahead. Right? If, if, if someone has wronged you and that's brought you to this difficult place, may I suggest that you let it go, right, that, that you forgive, right, Re- regardless of, of whether or not they deserve it, right, that you don't hold on to it, because as we hold on to those things, we really kind of find ourselves in prison in a, in a very real sense, maybe not locked up behind bars, we find ourselves in a prison, and we can choose to let it go. And if it's one of those things that, as I mentioned, that just is kind of life happening, you know, again, we can walk forward in, in the love of the Lord, realizing what God has said about you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. What does that mean, a new creation? It means God see, it's how God sees you, as fresh, as loved, right? That word means uh, if anyone's Christ uses a new creation, the word new means fresh. And the idea is perpetually fresh. It's kind of beyond our, our physical understanding. But that's how God sees you. So it's not up to us to believe anything different than to simply receive what God says about you. You are his workmanship, his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he has laid out for you to walk in. But you are his masterpiece. Believe that. 
about who you are, right? Super important to have God's perspective of who we are, to be quick to turn from the things that we can control and to let go of those things that we cannot control and to enjoy a refreshed, renewed uh, walk in relationship with the Lord. And if that's kind of a foreign term to you, this relationship with God, what we're really talking about is, is what Jesus said. He says, if, uh, uh, you know, I stand at the door and knock, and the idea is there's kind of, really speaking of the church, but the idea is kind of the door of our heart knock. If anyone hears my voice, Maybe you sense God speaking to you. Maybe he's been working in your life uniquely in uh, recent times. And you sense his voice calling you, right? He's, he says, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone opens the door, the idea is a, a door with a handle on one side, your side. You open the door. He says, I'll come in and I'll have fellowship or relationship with you. And it's really accomplished as, as simply as believing and responding. So I want to encourage you. If you find yourself discouraged, you find yourself down, and you haven't taken that step, come into that relationship with the Lord. If you've already done that and you still find yourself in that place, train your mind to believe about yourself what God says about you. Forgive those who you believe have wronged you. Right? Let go of those things that you can't control and enjoy being God's masterpiece and walking out the plan that he has for you.